Greetings everybody, Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I think this is Angels Part 5, if memory serves me correctly. But um, I have, for as long as it's up on YouTube, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be on YouTube, but um, I'm at a 1,995,000 views overall for the last, oh, I don't know, 10 years. I don't know. I just have a feeling when I get a little over 2, two million, it's not going to be there anymore. I mean, they're, they're banning people all over the place. And I'm starting to get subscribers again. Um, I used to have 10,000 plus subscribers. And then one day I woke up and I saw that there was like less than less than 6,000, like 5,000 something or other. I was like, wow, 5,000 people unsubscribed to me like that, huh? But um, I had people write me and say that they didn't know I was still doing videos. And they said, uh, you know, they... They said I. They found out I was un. They they were unsubscribed, and they asked me, "Did I unsubscribe them?" And I was like, "I can't do that." And they were like, "Well, I didn't unsubscribe myself from your channel, so had to be tube, you know." But um, here's the thing. I've got a playlist on Joseph, a study in forgiveness, and boy, I probably need to listen to it again. I don't feel very forgiving with that uh, problem that I had in Arkansas. But um, Joseph makes a really, really, I mean, it's like you could compare Joseph to Christ and his forgiveness to Israel. Read Jeremiah 3 8. Um, God divorced Israel, but then in the book of Hosea, and Jeremiah 31, 31, God promised to remarry Israel with a new covenant, which I believe has happened. So, you know, Jeremiah is a very interesting book. It's kind of depressing at times because when I read it, I see America is not on Europe. Uh, the EU is not much, it's not any different. Solomon said there was nothing new under the sun, and I am not one to argue with him. So, without further ado, turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 48. But uh, Joseph is a very interesting playlist on forgiveness. I cover the, pretty much the entire life of Joseph, and the way that he forgave his brothers is just unbelievable I, I you know all right so here's the thing uh, Isaac got a wife for Jacob who became Israel and then um, Jacob's sons the 12 tribes grew up they sold Jacob in uh, Joseph, I'm sorry, Joseph, they sold Joseph into slavery. He went to Egypt. And, uh, you know, Joseph is a really interesting study. I mean, it really is. Like I say, uh, Genesis is the foundation for the rest of the Bible. I mean, if you read Revelation and you don't understand the symbolism, well, go back to Genesis and read, starting there, and then read the rest of the Bible. A lot of symbolism comes right out of Genesis. A lot of it. The plagues of Revelation are very similar, in some ways identical, to the plagues of Egypt. And I did a playlist on that, too. Contrasting, comparing and contrasting. Uh, there are some differences, but overall, they pretty much apply so all right Genesis 48 verse 1 and it came to pass after these things that one told Joseph behold thy father is sick and he took with him his two sons Manasseh and Ephraim 
And one told Jacob and said, Behold, thy son Joseph cometh unto thee. And Israel strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. When you read Jacob and you read Israel, it's synonymous. Uh, Jacob was the man, Israel was the people. Verse 3, And Jacob said unto Joseph, God Almighty appeared unto me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me, and said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee, and I will make of thee a multitude of people and will give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt before I came unto thee into Egypt as mine, as Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. Now, uh, you will read where Joseph married a priest of Egypt, but they were not native Egyptians. Matter of fact, they were a group of people called the Hiskos. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. It's H-Y-S-K-S-O-S -S or something like that. You can read about them in history. They were a Semitic tribe and they conquered Egypt. And they were the ones that were there during the tri uh, time of Joseph. And then the Egyptians rose up and overthrew them. And then you could read about them during the time of Moses, which were the native Egyptians. Uh, you can read where it says, And uh, then arose a pharaoh that knew not Joseph. And that's who they're talking about, the native Egyptians. But the Hiskos were a Semitic rulers of Egypt during the time period of Joseph. And the priest gave his wife unto Joseph to marry. So, sort of like when Isaac married into the fan of, uh, family of Laban. So, you know, don't think that uh, Joseph married an Egyptian woman. No, didn't happen. So, verse 6. And thy issue, which thou begettest, begettest after them, shall be thine, and shall be called after the name of their brethren in their inheritance. And as for me, when I came from Padan, Padan, Rachel died by me in the land of Canaan in the way, when yet there was but a little way to come unto Eph, uh, Eph, Ephrath, Ephrath. And I buried her there in the way of Ephrath. The same is Bethlehem. Isn't that interesting? That's where Christ was born, right? And Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? And Joseph said unto his father, These are my sons whom God hath given me in this place. And he said, Bring them, I pray thee, unto me, and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age. In other words, he was blind or going blind, so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him, and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought, thought to see thy face, and lo, God hath showed me also thy seed. And Joseph brought them out from between his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. Now remember, Joseph was like the third ruler in Egypt. He was like one of the top dogs, and yet he's showing honor and respect unto his father. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand toward Israel's right hand, and brought them near unto him. And Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands wittingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. So... Now get the picture here. A lot of people miss this. Joseph took the firstborn and put him toward Jacob, uh, Jacob Israel's right hand. And he took the youngest and put him toward the left hand. But what did Jacob Israel do? He crossed his hands and did the opposite and put his right hand on the youngest and his left hand on the oldest. He made a cross. 
He made a cross, people. He made a cross with his hands. What was Jesus crucified on? Yeah. And he blessed Joseph and said, God, whom before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long this day, the angel, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads and let my name be named on them and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Now check this out, verse 17. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, the youngest, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, it displeased him. And he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. <laughs> See, he made a cross with his hands. And he put his right hand on the youngest and his left hand on the old eldest, the firstborn. I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people and he also shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. And he blessed them that day, saying, In thee shall Israel bless, saying, God shall make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And he set Ephraim before Manasseh. And Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die, but God shall be with you and bring you again unto the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to thee one portion above thy brethren, which I took out of the hand of the Amorite with my sword and with my bow. So Joseph was going to get a double portion, one for Ephraim, one for Manasseh. Some people in the identity movement will claim that Ephraim and Manasseh are America and Israel. Could be, maybe not, Bible doesn't say it, but makes more sense than the Antichrist over in the Middle East that hate Jesus. What can I tell you? All right, so, all right, so, we will now go to the book of Exodus, chapter 3. A little bit of background. Moses um, was born, and uh, if you don't know the story of Moses, my God, people, uh, which is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, my God, people, read the Bible. Read Genesis. Read Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua. Not Yeshua. Joshua. Very important. Uh, read the major prophets. Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah. Read the minor prophets. Obadiah, Micah, Nahum, Zephaniah, Zechariah. Uh, read the uh, the writings, Psalms, Proverbs. It's all worthwhile. Matter of fact, get uh, get the Alexander Scorby King James Bible on CD. You can get it for the New Testament on CD for about twenty five bucks from Amazon, delivered, and just pop a CD in your car on the way to work every day. Well. Uh, Today is uh, May 2nd, 2020. We're still locked down under medical martial law, supposedly. Uh, corona. But, uh, you know, that's what I've been trying to do since we're not allowed to go many places. I've been doing Bible studies and putting things together for uh, hopefully the near future. Pray for me, people, that I may may be strong i need it and um you know we need to pray for each other i tell you what everybody i'm talking to is being attacked and having problems and i've had problems in the past i'll 
tell you what. But uh, the way I've acted in the past, I'm surprised the Lord just didn't let me die. But I know that he had other plans for me. And hopefully I'm in his will now. So without further ado, let's read Exodus chapter 3. Uh, Moses was brought up by Pharaoh's family. These were the native Egyptians. And uh, he became a ruler in Egypt. He killed an Egyptian, uh, protecting his people Israel. And he had to flee. And no, not the insects that suck blood off dogs and cats. No. He had to uh, run away. So, verse 1. Exodus 3, verse 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. Now I believe he, they were, these people were also a Semitic race. I am pretty positive that these people were somehow related to the Hebrews, if they weren't not Hebrews themselves. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord, which some people think was Christ before he became uh, into a human body. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why this bush why the bush is not burnt and when the lord saw that he turned aside to see god called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said moses moses and he said here am i and he said draw not nigh hither put off thy shoes from off thy feet for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground Ah. Moreover, he said, I am. Didn't Jesus say, I am? He did a lot. I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Now remember, didn't we just read? In verse 2, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. But here is, he's saying, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Verse 7, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land, and a large and a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. All those ites are bad news bears, people. Really bad news. Now, therefore, behold, the cry, well, not all of them. The Israelites were good news, but, you know. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is coming to me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, and thou mayest bring forth my people and the children of Israel out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Now you got to realize something, people. Egypt is a major, a major world power. I mean, they were not an empire per se, but they were a very powerful country. I mean... Uh, you know, and Moses is like, wait, whoa, dude, you you want me to go to Pharaoh and, and tell him what? 
You want me to tell what? <laughs> huh. Who am I that I should go into Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when, I'm, when, I, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say unto me, What is his name? What is his name? Now, Egypt had multiple gods. They had Ra, R-A, who is uh, the sun god. Why is it that people say Ra, Ra, Ra? You know, having to do with cheerleaders. Why, why do they use that word? And then you had Heth, and then you had Set, uh, Anubis. Uh, those of you that uh, watched... Uh, SG-1, Stargate, you've heard these names because they took all those names out of ancient Egypt. Uh, you know, they had multiple gods. Uh, let's, so, you know, the children of Israel are very familiar with all these gods, I'm sure. So they're saying, well, what's this name? What, what, what god is this? What's, what's, what's his name? What is his name? Now, you had Hathor, which was the goddess of, I think, fertility. Easter, Ishtar, Lilith, more goddesses. Columbia, the go uh, another goddess. Columbia Pictures people, the movie. The Statue of Liberty. Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia. A lot of gods and goddesses. But what is his name? What shall I say unto them? Lord, when they ask me your name, what am I going to tell them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Okay. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you and see that which is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites unto a land flowing with milk and honey. And they shall hearken to thy voice, and thou, and thou shalt come, thou and the elders of Israel, unto the king of Egypt, and ye shall say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews hath met with us, and now let us go, we beseech thee, three days' journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Three days. Wasn't Jesus three days and three nights in the heart of the earth before his resurrection, from the crucifixion to the resurrection? Yep. What about Jonah in the belly of the whale? Three days and three nights, right? See, that, ver that number three, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, uh, one man has body, soul, and spirit. Uh, I'm telling you people, three is a very important number in the Bible. It pops up pretty often. So, and if you want to do a study on numbers in Scripture, and I'm not talking about that Kabbalah crap, 
I'm talking about God's plans and his numbers. Uh, there's a guy named Bollinger, and he has uh, a study called Numbers in Scripture. I think he was back in the 18-something or others, oh, so a little over 100-something years ago. He was quite a Bible scholar. He had some pretty good stuff, you know, but like everybody, you know, none of us knows it all. I mean, I'm still learning stuff and finding out things that I, uh, that I was wrong on years ago. So, and now let us go, we beseech thee, three days' journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. And I'm sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go, no, not by a mighty hand, and I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her that sojourneth in her house jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment, and ye shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters, and ye shall spoil the Egyptians. All right, so the plagues of Egypt have happened. Um, and uh, like I said, I got a playlist on that if you're interested. And now the Passover had happened. And Israel left. So let's skip to Exodus chapter 14. And we're going to read where, well, let's read. Verse 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before pi ha Iroth, between Migdal and the sea, over against Baal-Zephon. Now, B-A-A-L is uh, Baal-Zephon. Baal is a generic word meaning Lord, as in God. And it became so used in dealing with false gods and Satanism that uh, God said, don't use that word to refer to me anymore. Well, I'm paraphrasing. So this is uh, basically over against Lord Zephon. So evidently they named a place by... Zephon, which was some kind of a god. I don't know what it is. But anytime you see B-A-A-L in a name, uh, you know it's talking about something that's not good, a false god. All right, so in camp before pi ha Iroth, between Migdal and the sea against Baal Zephon, before it ye shall camp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness hath shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart. God said he, he said, I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he shall follow after them, and I will be honored among Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. Now, a lot of people say, you know, it was really cruel of the God to, to drown all those poor Egyptians. Well, but they were taking all the Hebrew male children and throwing them into the Nile for the crocodiles. You know, the king of Egypt, uh, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, said to, you know, kill all the male children so that only the women, if they wanted a husband, they would have to take an Egyptian, a Hamite, a non-chosen seed. You see, Satan was working to destroy the children of Israel even back then. Think about that. So, verse, uh, let's see. Well, let's read verse 4. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, 
that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this that we let Israel go from serving us? Yeah, let's go get them. Bring them back. I want to build some more pyramids or whatever. And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened, the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with, a mighty, with an mighty hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them and camping by the sea beside P. Ha Iroth before Baal Zavon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. Yeah, if I saw one of the most powerful nation's armies chasing after me, I could possibly be pretty scared too, you know? Verse 11, And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Oh yeah, you people are crying to God that you're slaves, but now you're all afraid and you don't you've saw all the things that the Lord did, all the plagues of Egypt. And now you just you're you're more afraid of Pharaoh and his army than you are of the Lord, really? Really? Verse 13, and Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, for he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. But lift, up thou, uh, but lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea, the Red Sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry land through the midst of the sea. Now there are so-called Bible scholars that will tell you that this was not the Red Sea. They'll tell you, well, you know, it was, this, this was impossible. So they'll tell you this was the Sea of Reeds, which basically was like ankle deep. And they said, that's how come the uh, children of Israel were able to cross, to cross that sea. And that was the miracle. Well, if you ask me, the miracle would be that the Egyptians drowned in ankle-deep water. No, it was the Red Sea, people. When you get morons telling you this kind of stuff, you know, you know they're from Satan. Well, if they crossed the Sea of Reeds, then Acts 7.36 is wrong. He brought them out. After that, he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. Why did they, you know, wasn't Jesus uh, tempted of the devil for 40 days? And Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Why 40 years? Well, he had took Israel out of Egypt, but now he was trying to take, he took Israel out of Egypt. Now he was trying to take Egypt out of Israel. 
He wanted to take all the false gods of Egypt out of their mouths, out of their minds, and show them the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and his ways and his will. That's why it was 40 years. If you want a second witness, how about Hebrews 11.29? By faith they passed through the Red Sea, the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians, a saying to do, were drowned. So when you hear a Bible scholar, so-called, tell you they crossed the Sea of Reeds and not the Red Sea, well, just know you're talking to one of Satan's minions. Because Acts 7 and Hebrews 11 declares them to be liars. All right. So, but lift, verse 16, but lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry land through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am, I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, and the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood between them. And it came, to, and it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all the night. See, the cloud of the Lord was darkness to the Egyptians, but it was light to the children of Israel. Big difference. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all of Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels. Wow, can you imagine that? You're on your chariot and your wheels fall off. That they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots, and the horsemen, and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them, there remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on the right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. Yeah, you want to kill all the Hebrew babies, the male babies? having them thrown into the Nile River for the crocodiles to eat? Yeah. Yeah, the Lord paid them back in spades. And guess what? This was Pharaoh's army. I guess uh, after that, Pharaoh was, uh, uh, Egypt was probably not much of a world power after this. What do you think? Verse 31. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Now, people, Moses and his brother Aaron were Levites. They were the tribe of the priests. I know I've beat it that into the ground, but 
you know, it just goes to let you know that these were the leaders before Israel wanted to have a king as recorded by Samuel. So, you know, God wanted the Levites to be the priests, to be the leaders, his leaders, where ultimately the Lord himself was king. That's a very important distinction. You know, he wanted to be their king. And the most their taxes would have ever been was a tithe, a tenth of the, you know, agricultural. You know, if you had 10 cows born that year, well, you gave one cow to the Levites. That was your taxes. What are our taxes now? I hear in Canada, the United States, and Europe, the EU is well over 50% of every penny you make goes to taxes. Well, the Lord only wanted a tenth that was to support the Levites. But the people didn't want the Lord as a king. They wanted an earthly king. Now, I guess we got time. We'll take a look at 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 1. And it came to pass when Samuel was old. Now, Samuel was a prophet. He was a leader at this time. Uh, when Samuel was old, that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, J-O-E-L, Joel. And the name of his second, Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre, which is an old English word for money, but turned aside after lucre and took bribes and perverted judgment. Now, don't think for a minute that people did not tell Samuel that this was going on, that his sons were doing evil stuff. Samuel had to have known. And yet he did nothing about it. And this thing displeased the Lord. Although Samuel, in other ways, was good. All right, so... Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not, thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel, Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken, listen. Hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto me, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. They don't want, they don't want me to be a king. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, Wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, howbeit yet protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked of him a king. And he said, This shall be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself for his chariots to be his horsemen, and some shall run before his chariots. And he will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties, and will set them to ear his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his instruments of war and instruments of his chariots. In other words, he's going to take your children and make them soldiers, and they're going to be the farmers, they're going to be the reapers, they're going to make... Uh, his swords and make chariots you know verse 13 and he will take your daughters to be confectionaries and to be cooks and to be bakers uh, confectionaries is uh, people that make you've heard of confections uh, like pastries cakes cookies that's sort of kind of thing 
verse 14, and he will take your fields and your vineyards and your olive yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servants. Yeah, he's going to take the best things that you have and give them to his friends. And he will take the tenth of your seed and of your vineyards and give them to his officers and to his servants. And he will take your men servants and your maid servants and your goodliest young men and your asses and put them to his work. He will take the tenth of your sheep and ye shall be his servants. Listen to the punchline. And ye shall cry out in that day because of your king, which ye shall have chosen you. And the Lord will not hear you in that day. In other words, when he does all these things and taxes you to death, don't come crying to me because I ain't going to listen. That's the Bob translation. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us, that we may be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. And Samuel heard all the words of the people, and he rehearsed them in the ears of the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, Hearken unto their voice, and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go ye every man unto his city. All right, people. Well, that's it. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world, in His Jesus' precious name. Amen.